Hi. As part of our A-level geology, it's important to be able to recognise some of the key minerals that we find in rocks, not just in hand specimen, but also in a form that we call a thin section. This is a slice of rock, maybe only 30 microns thick, that's so thin that when light is uh, shone through it, we can see the internal structure of the rock down a petrological microscope. We get a very interesting effect as well when two polarizing filters are placed across the light. Normally that would lead to just, just blackness, you wouldn't be able to see anything. But as the light is bent as it goes through these minerals, it creates a whole distinctive pattern of colours which allow us to recognise some of the minerals in thin sections. Now, this is done in detail at university level geology. For A level, we need to be able to recognise some of the just some of the basic rock forming minerals that we're likely to come across. One of these is obviously quartz. This is from a, a thin section of a metamorphic gneiss from Scotland. You can see that there's a band running through the middle of the, the view you're seeing with a whole series of different crystals that range in colour from white through to black and lots of different shades of grey in between. This is distinctively quartz. If you actually look at it on the microscope and you rotate the stage, as the quartz moves through different angles, you'll see it changing from white to black and back to white again. Another common forming, uh, rock forming mineral are the feldspars. Both types of feldspar that we look at, orthoclase and plagioclase, show us some of the key properties about the twinning of crystals, where you get different crystals growing together. This is shown in this pattern of grey and white or black and white stripes that we can see in thin section. Orthoclase feldspar, like this one from a granite in Donegal in Ireland, shows us a distinctive crosshatch pattern as a result. We can't see any cleavage, unfortunately, but that crosshatch pattern is quite distinctive. In plagioclase feldspar here, which are the minerals around the edge of the screen, we can see that the pattern of, of black and white stripes here, or grey and white stripes, is different. These are a bit simpler and a bit clearer as well, I think. This is perhaps more distinctive of plagioclase feldspar, like in this gabbro, this igneous rock from the Lake District. Again, we can't see cleavage, but we can see this distinctive twinning of crystals. Orgite gives an interesting range of colours. This particular specimen is actually taken from the volcano of Arthur's Seat uh, in Edinburgh. And we can see a very large orgite crystal in the sort of orangey brown colour with quite well formed crystal edges here. But there's also a sort of bluish, reddish colour with some uh, a bit of orange around the edge on the far left hand side of the screen. That's all giant as well. Its colour does vary a little depending on the exact chemical composition of the all giant. Hornblende also varies in colour a little. This particular one, again taken from a, a granite. Uh, in, from Donegal in Ireland, does have a, some similarities in appearance to Orgite. We get that pale brown orangey colour you can see on the, the right hand side. But we also see uh, a range of pale green shades, like the 
crystal sort of more on the left hand side of the screen. As in hand specimen, all giant hormal blend are distinguished by their cleavage. Unfortunately, neither of these views shows us uh, cleavage in these crystals. One of the most distinctive crystals we can find in igneous rocks is olivine. These examples from a gabbro from the west coast of Scotland are fairly typical of what we can see. There are a range of very bright colours. It's a very vivid mineral in thin section. But olivine, because it forms at quite early in crystallisation at very high temperatures, is often uh, fractured and, and weathered. So we see this you know, quite broken looking appearance with these dark lines along the fractures uh, showing where the, the olivine has actually started to, to alter to a new mineral called serpentinite. Micas tend to be very distinctive. This example from a granite in Cornwall shows us the distinctive uh, flaky or uh, tabular structure that we see in a hand specimen of mica. We often see the cleavage, this parallel basal cleavage, making the flaky crystals that are so recognisable. The colours uh, of biotype tend to be brown or dark green, maybe reddish brown. Depends a little bit on the iron content, but it is quite distinctive. Muscovite mica, on the other hand, does share the appearance of biotite in terms of its crystal form. We see again the flakes, we see the basal cleavage. The colours though of muscovite, as you can see, are much brighter there, as in this case from a, a schist uh, from the Scottish Highlands. Those are the main rock forming silicate minerals. There are some others though I think it's useful to look at, such as calcite. This is a limestone from South Wales and we can see the calcite crystals here which have quite distinctive sort of pale pastel um, set of colours that we can recognise. Often the cleavage can be seen, the very distinctive rhombohedral cleavage that's so characteristic of calcite. Finally, this big black crystal we can see in this example of a, a schist from the Scottish Highlands is garnet. Now garnet in cross-polarised light like this tends to be black. It blocks the light, which can be quite distinctive in itself. Perhaps even more distinctive though is this characteristic crystal shape. surrounded, as you can see, uh, by the muscovite mica deformed during the metamorphism of this rock. So, let's try and think about this. Let's try and put this together. This is a granite. It's a thin section of a granite. You can see that there are several different minerals shown here. What I'd like you to do is try and recognise these. There are five different minerals to identify. Use the information from the video to see if you can identify these minerals. Bring your identifications along to class and I'll see you then.